moving on from that, we, let's, let's talk about this. I thought this was absolutely hilarious and interesting. Hmm, let me take that back. I thought this was somewhat um, sad. Let's say it's sad. Yeah, I won't say it's hilarious and interesting. I don't like to take you know pleasure in anyone's demise or misfortune because I think that's a bit lame. But in general, I think some of you guys would have remembered a while back on my random show, maybe not a while, but maybe a couple of episodes ago, maybe 43, I mentioned or I featured a clip that was shared on the Fire and the Kids subreddit of Brendan admitting on the King and the Sting or one of those shows that he was going to go back on JRE, but not only just him going back on there, it was going to be a fight companion, right? The legendary fight companions that they used to do where they would all sit down and watch UFC um, in the background and basically talk shit, eat you know, loads of cheese, drink loads of wine, smoke weed and just get really silly. And it was really, really fun, right? Really, really fun show to watch. Remember, even for me, especially being a casual UFC fan, it was always good to have those guys on in the background whilst I was watching the actual fight myself at home. And then, of course, over time, um, things kind of changed. Joe Rogan decided to move. And then at the same time, Brian Callan got cancelled. Um, Brenda was going through what he was going through. And then I guess um, Joe just didn't want that smoke or didn't want anything to kind of disrupt maybe his sweat idea. Who, know, who knows? And he kind of put that whole show on pause. Or he just basically said he wasn't going to do it anymore because he's obviously going to move away and people couldn't come visit him too often because the Fight Companion show was quite regular. Reg- it was quite It was on regularly because the fight cards were on regularly too. Um, and that all changed. And of course, Brendan took it over you know, with the permission of Joe and started doing his own Calabasas fight companion thing, which isn't, you know, anywhere near as good as the original one. Because uh, the original one, you know, wasn't because of the show quality or the production levels. It was mostly because of the people that were featured on it, right? Eddie Bravo, Brian Callen, Brendan Shaw, um, you know, Joe Rogan kind of were really good in terms of their chemistry and how they got along on the show. So that was all well and good. Well, Unfortunately, we're now approaching with, I think the day that they'll mention the fight campaign is meant to be tomorrow. Cause I'm, I'm sure there's a card coming up, right? And we've heard no confirmation from Joe Rogan that this is actually happening. So it might be the case that maybe Brendan Schaub, in his haste to announce it because he wanted to display, cause I, I think he announced it quickly in the way that he did because he wanted to prove to people that he was still really close to Brendan, really close to Joe Rogan. Because if you guys remember clearly in the last time he was there, there was a lot of kind of miscommunication. It felt like they hadn't seen each other in months. It felt like they haven't t- spoken to each other properly in a long time. Um, it was very awkward. It, di- it didn't really flow as well as it did in the past. So it just felt a little bit clunky. So I felt like Brendan went out of his way to say he was going to be on JRE because he went to prove to everybody and maybe to himself that he's still friends with this guy and they're still cool. And just to kind of flex in it because, you know, he, he's essentially um, Joe Rogan's resident flipping cock holster. And he was really happy when he kind of, you know, he was really chuffed when he basically said it himself. And I will actually play the clip here just to kind of quickly remind you on what Brendan said um, when he was last on The King and the Sting in terms of his appearance on JRE Fight Companion. And then the original Fight Commands coming back will be on Rogan September 3rd. Rogan, Eddie, Cal, and me. Y'all are doing it here? No, we're going to. Let's go back in. And then the original Fight Commands coming back will be on Rogan September 3rd. Rogan, Eddie, Cal, and me. Y'all are doing it here? No, we're going. We're all going to Austin. Wow. That's going to be fun. Eddie's going to be in it? Mm-hmm. He just sent me a video. Look at look how chuffed he was, right? He was so over the moon. I've never I've never seen Brendan smile like that ever in the history of time. Whether it's at the end of his comedy special, whether it's him talking about his kids, talking about his partner, talking about his extended family, talking about his own podcast, he never smiles like that when it does anything to do with him. But when it comes to Joe Rogan, he absolutely loves that guy. So clearly, he was happy that it was going to happen. But so far, we've had no actual word, or we've seen nothing that was actually going to occur. And we're you know I'm, I'm recording this now on the second of September and. And so far, we've had we've heard absolutely nothing. Now, some people are speculating that maybe Brenda Shaw let the cat out of the bag too soon because Joe Rogan usually likes to keep his stuff secret. He doesn't like to announce guests ahead of time, even though we've got sites like this that essentially give us a let me show so sorry even though we've got sites like this that give you a brief sort of like overview i think it's called a yeah it's called jerry library it can give you a brief kind of a, a, an idea on who's to come up it says yeah we may uh, no, uh yeah so it's not affiliated with joe rogan at all but these guys are basically joe rogan fanboys also and they kind of pay attention to the podcast so anytime joe rogan maybe let slip that someone's going to be on or sometimes a guest might let it slip themselves and announce it on social media they're usually updated on here and so far, in terms of the page 
where it says up and coming guests, we have nothing on here that features anything to do with the fight companion. The only thing that we do have on here, if you actually do pay attention, is Eddie Bravo. And if I'm not mistaken, I did check Eddie Bravo's social recently, and he did post a story of him being in a Joe Rogan podcast studio. So Eddie Bravo was there filming his own episode with Joe Rogan, but the fight companion that they were meant to do is not going to happen. And if you look above Eddie Bravo's name, you see Irish Shafir, Shane Gillis, and Mark, Mark Norman, who, um, you know, they, and they do this show called Protect Our Parks, right? Which is a really funny show where they will basically get blasted and kind of try and fall around. And this show essentially took over, I feel like, fight companion because he's a kind of like Joe Rogan's new kind of favorite, you know, comedians that he's sort of infatuated with, um, kind of replaced, you know, Brendan and Brian in that respect, and maybe Chris Alia, and maybe a few others. So that same date that he was meant to do the show, you know, the little fight companion on is, looks like it's been taken over by Irish Shafir, Shane Gillis and Mark Norman. Eddie Bravo's already there doing his own show. And so far there's been nothing to turn to, to, to kind of give us an idea that this fight companion is going to come back again. So is this a case of, Brendan, yeah, this is what I've got to end it with. Is this the case of Brendan Schaub lying flat out about the Joe Rogan Companion show coming back in its with its original lineup, or did Brendan Schaub announce it too hastily? The word got back to Joe Rogan, and he was like, "Nah, not doing that anymore. I don't want the hassle. I don't want the flipping cancellation attempts because you know it's going to happen, right?" Because of the crimes that were, you know, levied against someone like, uh, Brian Callen and how he got cancelled, because of all the drama around Brendan Schaub and stuff, you know that if that show does go on, either something's gonna occur where they're gonna bring it up, the drama, or, or, or more likely than not, someone's gonna try and recancel Brian Callen because he's on, one of the biggest podcasts in the world, right? His exposure is going to be increased again. So maybe Joe Rogan just doesn't want that kind of smoke or did Brendan lie? What do you guys think in the chat? I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you reckon? Did Brendan lie about the whole thing or did Joe Rogan cancel it because Brendan opened his mouth too quickly and was, you know, can't keep a secret? Let me know what you think in the chat. I'd love to know. What do you guys think in the chat? What do you guys think in the chat? Did Brendan lie in or did Joe Rogan cancel it? Please tell me because I don't know what's happening. I wonder if BJ will be serving drinks. Yeah, exactly. He probably he he probably will ask to. To be honest, he'll be so happy to. BGO and fucking Joe Rogan will be awful. He'll be high on coke and just be blabbering away, trying to impress Joe Rogan with his superior intellect and his use of words. Um, but yeah, what do you go? What do you guys think? I think Pump. I think Papa jumped the gun. Says Mrs. Singh said it's cancelled. I agree with you. Okay, cool. So people are saying, so it's split here. People are saying cancelled or he jumped the gun. So it's a, it's a very split camp here in terms of, um, Shane Jr. said Joe cancelled because Shaw was being too thirsty and ruined the vibe. It's like a desperate girlfriend. Exactly. That's probably true. <laughs> or when you agree to meet somebody and they just keep blowing up your phone. Maybe they like that. Yeah. Shaw says, um, just didn't have fake fuck all else to think about, to talk about. Sorry. That's it. Okay. Andrew W says it's an outright lie is insane, but I wouldn't put it past him at this point. Yes, yeah, true. That's the thing with Brendan. He lies so often that even an insane lie like this isn't something that's out of his realm because it's a dumb lie to make because if it doesn't happen, we know you're lying. And also you don't need to lie about it because who fucking gives a shit? You know what I mean? And that person said Norman, Gillis and Ari are much funnier than Callan Shaw. But anyways, yeah, for sure. I agree with that, especially now anyway, because they don't, Unfortunately, with Brendan Schaub and Brian um, in general, their entire show, like I said, I, I've been an, I was an old school fan of the Fire and the Kid. I loved it when it was back on the Fox days. And the reason why it was funny was because of their dynamic. The dynamic between Brendan Schaub and Brian Callan made the show funny. The fact that they were um, basically taking the piss out of each other, right? Um, kind of like an older brother, younger brother type thing. The moment Brendan became more successful on paper and started to believe his own hype and legitimately thought he was the next coming of fucking Joe Rogan or whatever he thought he was, that's the moment the show dipped, especially when Brian Callan's career started to dip also or started to stagnate. And Brendan started to look at it think, probably thinking, why is it so hard for him? It's so easy. All you have to do is just work really hard, go and do loads of sets, and then you can also get a show. To I mean, he, he started to have that weird disdain for people who weren't successful for him because he kind of made it so quickly. And then that kind of built into his ego and it never recovered after that. And that was the whole thing as well when they did the Fight Companion. Their chemistry on TFAT K was basically exemplified on the Fight Companion. Plus you add in the element of Eddie Bravo being absolutely nuts and talking about his conspiracies and stuff and not being afraid to call him them out. And you had a really funny and interesting show. 
for the most part. Like they were really legitimately funny. Um, but nowadays, the fact that Brendan basically treats Brian like an employee, the fact that Brian's been devoid of any kind of funniness that he had prior, it's all completely gone uh, because of what he's been accused of, whatever, or what he got um, accused of doing, um, blah, blah, blah. And um, Joe Rogan's just a kind of completely different headspace. You know what I mean, he's completely gone. He's like, you know, he's far, far gone past those kind of guys. And again, if you watch that recent appearance with Brendan on Joe Rogan, you could tell those guys don't speak as much as they did in the past. Maybe before I could believe if Brendan said, yeah, I text Joe or talk to Joe every day. But nowadays I don't believe that's true. Maybe he might DM him or like his stories and stuff. And that might be equivalent to talking, but... Sorry, how these communicate before is not the same whatsoever. For sure, Joe Rogan's either cut them off or distanced himself, especially since he's moved to flipping um Texas. But yeah, that's the development on that thing. So let's see. They've got one more day to prove it wrong. If Brendan does able is if he's able to go on there beforehand, then we'll know. But I think the alarm bells should have been ringing for Brendan in terms of him going on that show when this little interaction happened. Do you remember? I think someone perfectly just was getting on the phone. The kids subbed it. This little interaction happened, and I, and you got the feeling that maybe word got back to Brian to tell Brendan to fucking shut the fuck up and stop blabbering. And here's him mentioning again that he's gonna go on Jerry. Now you and I are gonna fly to Austin. We're gonna fly we're to Austin. Little, I don't know if we're supposed to say that right now. Oh, I mean, I think he wants to keep that. Oh, really? Secret. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, but either way, you and I will fly to Austin. Do something. That's all I'm gonna say. We're gonna do something. Mm -hmm. Little T. See, so clearly word got back to somebody in the camp. Maybe Brendan's phone wasn't charged and he didn't know what was said, but clearly something was said. Um, things were, you know, <laughs> and then maybe you know the, the show got cancelled because he talked too much. But I doubt it. I think Brent. I think Joe actually does like those guys, and you know, say what you want about Brendan and Brian. Joe is a really loyal guy. Uh, he does. Oh, the volume. Oh, sorry, the volume was high. Sorry, sorry, the volume, 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 volume. Okay, let me play again. Let me play again. Let me play again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me play it again. So the, let me play it again. Now you and I are gonna fly to Austin. We're gonna fly we're to Austin. Little, I don't know we're, if we're supposed to say that right now. Oh, I mean, I think he wants to keep that. Oh, really? A secret. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, but either way, you and I will fly to Austin. Do something. That's all I'm gonna say. We're gonna do something. Mm -hmm. Little teaser. So, like I was about to say. So what you want about Brendan and Brian, Joe is a really loyal dude. He does really go out of his way to help his friends. And I feel like um, he's not going to abandon them or leave them alone in that regard, never in a million years or cut them off fully. So if he did promise them they were going to do a fire campaign, I'm, I still think they're probably going to end up doing it. Maybe they might not do a fire campaign. It might just be like a, a podcast with all four of them on, just shooting the shit. And then they might just release it after because Joe now doesn't live stream his shows anymore. He banks them anyway. So if he's got a trip coming up or he might be away or whatnot, he might just do loads of shows and pump them out as he's away and stuff. So that could be something they may do. So it may still happen. But it's just funny that he announced it so ahead of time, was so chuffed at himself that he was going to do it. And then now we've heard absolutely crickets from it. And then the last thing that we heard from it was Brian Callum basically telling him, hey, relax, don't, you know, don't basically expose the entire thing uh, because uh, what's he going to call it? He doesn't like that kind of thing. Let's see if we 